welcome back. Uh, this video is going to be talking about specific volume, specific volume, and PV diagrams. So in the last video, I first told you what specific volume was, and that is simply a volume over a mass, or one over density. Pretty simple. So, for example, let's say I had a piston. Now, just a, a simple piston has some arbitrary mass on top, and it's full of just some random gas. Doesn't really matter what it is right now. And I heat it up. So I put heat into it. So this is state one. So state two, same piston. But the gas is now taking up a larger volume. Uh, so what I could what you could say is that its volume increases. But what I could also say is that its specific volume increases because the mass has not changed but there has been an increase in volume so uh, there has also been an increase in specific volume I could even say the density has increased now uh, let's, uh, let's show this process in a let's graph this process and what we call a PV diagram. Now a PV diagram is just a regular old graph with pressure in the y-axis and specific volume in the x-axis. You may have seen these uh, before but instead of specific volume you had regular volume. Uh, these are very very similar uh, just the values uh, for the x-axis uh, or the specific volume axis may be slightly different but the pattern should still stay the same. So in this, let's just say this is the first state. It has some pressure and some specific volume. Now I already said that the specific volume increases, so we know that point two is going to be somewhere to the right. But what about its pressure? Well actually the pressure is going to stay the same. And that is because with pistons uh, the piston is going to expand to accommodate the the larger gas, so it's not going to stay. It's not going to be contained. The gas uh, particles may be moving faster than they were before, but because they take up a larger space now, they're going to be hitting the the roof of the the roof or ceiling of this piston just as many times as it was before. So it's not going to have any increase in pressure. And let's just show one more example of this. Let's say I had uh, another piston with a mass on top and has a gas in there. And let's say in state two, I wanted to double that mass increase the mass. So in this case there was a decreased specific volume of one is actually greater than the specific volume of two. So we draw another PV diagram. Let's say state one is over here now. We already know that the there was a decrease in specific volume and this time there is going to be an increase in pressure. Now this is because the same gas uh, that's moving, uh, each particle is moving, you know, just as fast, uh, is now taking up a smaller space. So the particles of gas are hitting the, the roof of this cylinder more, more times per second. So they are hitting again and again and again, creating a, a force over the area of the, 
of the roof, which, as you know, is pressure. So there's actually an increase in pressure this time. So this uh, leads me to a what we call, uh, well, this is going to be another example of a use for a PV diagram. We and now, if I were to take a substance, this is going to be a PV diagram for ammonia or NH3. Uh, if I wanted to show all uh, how a substance would heat up at its boiling point, I would have something like this where and at the top is so everything on the left of this little line uh, of this dot so this line over here is ammonia at its liquid base and everything to the right is ammonia at its gaseous state and everything in between here is a mixture between its gaseous state and its liquid state so at uh, any given pressure Let's just say this is like uh, one, uh, 0.1 megapascals. There's going to be some specific volume over here where it's a liquid, and then over here it's a gas. Now, the reason why this is important is because if I were to draw a constant temperature line on this graph, let's say a constant temperature line at one megapascal, it's going to be horizontal. As long as we're inside this vapor dome, temperature and pressure don't change. If one stays the same, the other one stays the same along with it. Now, this is just the same temperature. We can say this is like uh, 50 degrees Celsius. And if I were to continue uh, on with this trend, it's actually going to, when it breaks the vapor dome, it's going to go down like this because um, in order to have an increase in specific volume at the same temperature we're going to have an, uh, a decrease in pressure so and then what do we have up here so while it's in here it's the substance is we call that it's sat we say that it's saturated while it's inside this vapor dome and on here it's a liquid on this line it's a gas now uh, as you see we we can break this vapor dome and when we do we call it a superheated gas when it's on this side because it no longer fits the pattern of a saturated gas because a gas can be saturated and when we uh, break it on the other side, we call it a super cool liquid just to, to separate it from a regular liquid. And the and like I said before, while we're inside this vapor dome, well, this is what we call it a vapor dome. Uh, we we say the substance is saturated. Now, what that means is just a mixture of a liquid and a gas. But if I wanted to give a value to tell me how much gas versus liquid we would have, I would use something called a quality. Now, a quality is a thermodynamic uh, property, and we denote that with the letter X, which is simply the percentage of a substance that's a U that is a gas so if I had a quality of 0.8 that means I have 80 percent gas and 20 percent of it is liquid So, uh, just real quick, the reason why we have a, a horizontal uh, constant temperature line is because think about it. 
While something is at its boiling point, because this is what we're showing, is different boiling points at different pressures, uh, something can exist both as a gas and a liquid. At 100 degrees Celsius, water can exist in its liquid phase and its gaseous state. They can coexist. So while it's in the vapor dome, we have gas and a liquid coexisting at its boiling point. So this is more or less what a vapor dome shows us. So, for example, let's say uh, we're going to stick with ammonia. We had its temperature. We know its temperature to be 50 degrees Celsius. And we know its quality to be 0.8. Um, if we know two uh, thermodynamic properties, temperature and quality are both of them, we can look up with a thermodynamic table, which I'll teach you how to read in the next video. We can look up any other thermodynamic property, including specific volume. Now I want to know what the specific volume of ammonia is when it is saturated. We know it's saturated because we're given a quality. If it does not have a quality, it is either superheated gas or supercooled liquid. But we have a quality, so we know it's, it's saturated. And I want to know what its specific volume is. I can look up a thermodynamic table uh, for ammonia at 50 degrees Celsius and see that it has a specific volume for its liquid phase, we're denoting that with an F, to be 0.001777 meters cubed per kilogram. And we, found, we also look up that at the specific volume of its gaseous state is 0 0.06337 meters cubed per kilogram. And I want to know what the specific volume is. Now, we know its quality, so we know how much of its gas versus how much of the liquid we have. So if I wanted to find out what the specific volume of a substance is, I would take the quality and multiply that by the specific volume of its gaseous state, because that's how much gas we have, and then add 1 minus the quality times the specific volume of a liquid, because that's how much liquid we have. So, for instance, the specific volume of ammonia that we're looking for equals 0.8 times 0 0.063 plus 0.2 times 0 0.001777 which equals uh, roughly equals 0 0.048 meters cubed per kilogram and that is how you use a vapor dome and PV diagrams to find what a uh, find specific volumes for substances uh, with different qualities. And in our next video, we're going to show you how to read thermodynamic tables and and read these values and learn to get those values.